We need action from everyone, everywhere. 17 Sustainable Development Goals are our guide. They are a to-do list for people and planet and the blueprint for success. What was once unthinkable has now become unstoppable. It is a world waking up to its responsibilities. As we follow these developments from New Delhi, we realize afresh each time our own responsibility towards helping India and the world move closer to these goals. Ever since we started our journey in 1974, we have worked relentlessly towards building a safer and cleaner world. Today we know the challenges are growing taller, even as time runs out. But we also know our best is yet to come. Our efforts to develop clean lighting and cooking solutions have impacted nearly 4.5 million people who lived without electricity in rural India and parts of Africa. Communities whose incomes have improved with access to energy and who can now breathe clean indoor air. On the other hand, we are developing new models that can accelerate large-scale deployment of rooftop solar PV systems in urban India. Nearly 600 small and medium enterprises across the country have adopted a range of energy-efficient technologies and practices promoted by us. These technologies, applied in energy-intensive industries such as foundry, glass, forging, engineering and brickmaking, have altogether reduced energy consumption by 200,000 tonnes of oil equivalent. We also conduct energy audits for large industries in India and other developing countries, helping them to adopt energy-efficient technologies and best operating practices. Elsewhere, small industries that struggled against escalating bills of diesel or electricity now derive clean energy from our biomass gasifiers. Till date, we have deployed nearly 600 gasifiers to provide thermal energy in 15 applications. These gasifiers have reduced the energy bills of these enterprises and also provide a cleaner work environment to their workers. We have provided green building advisory to nearly 200 buildings in India, helping them to reduce their energy and water consumption. Our rating system Griha, that measures the energy and environmental performance of buildings over its life cycle, now has over 800 registered projects in India. Last but not the least, we apply our modelling capabilities to project energy demand and supply scenarios at the state and national levels. These efforts have assisted decision makers in shaping a sound energy policy for India. As our cities choke with polluted air, we are applying state-of-the-art models to analyse current and future air quality scenarios in hotspots like New Delhi and Bengaluru. These models help us in assessing the success of the measures that are being made to improve air quality. In Karnataka along the polluted stretch of the river Kali, we have provided clean drinking water to local communities with a simple technology called river bank filtration. In 24 locations across the country, we have deployed a technology called TEAM that converts large quantities of food waste from canteens and townships into biogas and manure. 
Our mycorrhizal technology uses a biological process to convert wastelands into green belts. In several locations in the country, we have used mycorrhiza to reclaim land that was left severely degraded with toxic industrial waste. Nearly 70% of oil refineries in India use our oil zapper technology. Oil Zapper, a bacterial consortium that degrades crude oil and oil sludge, has reclaimed more than 100,000 hectares of oil-contaminated soils in different parts of the country. We are now engaged in cleaning up the massive oil spills in Kuwait, the first of its kind large-scale bioremediation project implemented by India's biotechnology sector. The yield of wheat in some fields of Punjab and Haryana has increased by 25%, while the use of chemical fertilizers has reduced by 50%. Our mycorrhizal technology that uses naturally occurring fungi in nature has increased both productivity and nutritional value of several varieties of crops in approximately 18 lakh acres in India, apart from giving successful results in Europe and North America as well. We're also developing nano-fertilizers and nano-pesticides that can protect soil and water from an overdose of chemicals. Our integrated pest management practices developed for different crop varieties are giving higher yields, better quality and nearly 50% reduction in use of chemical pesticides in parts of Haryana, Uttarakhand and Andhra Pradesh. Our biopesticide Bolcure is a registered product with the Central Insecticide Board of India. We're developing a technology to produce fuel and food from microalgae. Our state-of-the-art micropropagation facility in Gurgaon, Haryana, has developed protocols for growing high-quality planting material. Its production capacity of 2 million plants in a year means we can serve a large mass of farmers by providing them high-quality, disease-free plants. We've taken all this knowledge from lab to land through our Himalayan center in Mukteshwar and our Northeast center in Guwahati. Small farmers in these regions have enhanced their average incomes by adopting new crop varieties, technologies and practices shared by us. On the policy front, we strengthened the case for promoting organic agriculture after we examined its viability in Punjab, Uttarakhand and Karnataka. Amongst a range of solutions for ensuring water security, we have developed our core competency in water auditing. We have helped large industries such as thermal power plants, heavy engineering and railways to reduce water losses in the range of 20 to 40%. Through a modeling-based work, we are developing a deeper understanding of the water energy nexus, particularly to support decision-making for India's power sector. Across various states of India, we regularly train officials of water and sanitation departments. Amidst growing water stress in Uttarakhand, we're helping the state government in evaluating the impact of watershed programs in nearly 1,600 villages across the state. We're also among the few research institutes to set up two glacier monitoring observatories at nearly 4,000 meters above sea level, one each in western and eastern Himalayas. This research will improve our understanding of how climate change is influencing melt response of the glaciers and its consequent impact on river runoff patterns. The evolving field of climate modeling is critical for preparing us for future climate risks. Our supercomputing architecture has improved our capacity to generate future climate scenarios over the Indian subcontinent at high spatial resolutions. Under an international consortium, we are examining climate change vulnerabilities and finding solutions to adapt in the glacier-fed river basins of South Asia. In the coastal cities of Vishakhapatnam and Banaji, we worked with the city governments to create spatial inventories of infrastructure assets that are likely to be vulnerable to sea level rise or cyclonic storms. 
Further, we demonstrated a management system that can help city authorities in safeguarding their infrastructure and services from climate risks. For industries, we have assisted in building a framework that helps them to measure and manage their greenhouse gas emissions. We're currently engaging with nearly 40 leading corporates, enabling them to become more profitable and sustainable business organizations. In the forestry sector, we continue to assert the role of forest communities in mitigating climate change. Working with a number of state forest departments, we have created methodologies for forest dwellers in India to receive carbon-based financing from developed countries. Through our modeling-based work, we also contributed to research that helped the Government of India in determining India's climate action goals ahead of the Paris Agreement. While we constantly endeavor to create new knowledge, we strive just as much to spread this knowledge far and wide. Recognizing the youth as an important constituency, we have reached out to nearly 25,000 schools and 10,000 colleges in India through various programs on environmental sustainability. In higher education, Terry University has conferred postgraduate degrees on more than 1,300 students in various disciplines of sustainable development. Every year since 2001, we've been convening one of the largest global summits, the Delhi Sustainable Development Summit, now elevated to the World Sustainable Development Summit, to gather the finest thinkers of the world to share and reiterate their messages on sustainable development. Our books, journals, magazines and films help us in reaching the unreached. In all our pursuits, our most valuable resource is our human capital. We are a workforce of nearly 1,200 people comprising scientists, sociologists, economists and engineers, among several other disciplines working together to design holistic solutions. We're headquartered in New Delhi, but our messages spread across India through our regional centres in Bengaluru, Gawahati, Mumbai, Panaji and Nainital. Beyond India, we've taken our solutions to countries of Latin America, Africa, South Asia, Southeast Asia and small island states. Into the fifth decade of our journey now, our commitment to put our research into practice is stronger than ever. We're determined to take our solutions to as many homes, industries, farmers and policymakers as is needed to ensure a safer and happier future for all.